In our discussion on particles inside rigid boxes, also known as infinite potential wells, we said that the wave function that represents our particle inside a rigid box is given by this equation. So, the wave function is equal to the constant A multiplied by sine of n pi divided by L multiplied by x, where x is the position of the particle along the bottom portion of the box along the x-axis, n is the quantum number, pi is a constant, and L is our width of that rigid box. Now, A, as we said, is a constant, and we saw in a previous lecture that A is equal to the square root of 2 divided by L, where L is the width of our box. Now, we also said that constant A represents the amplitude of the wave produced by our particle. The question is, where exactly does this equation come from? So in this lecture, we're going to derive this equation uh, using a concept known as normalization. So, recall that for, for any wave function in quantum mechanics to actually be physically meaningful and measurable, we have to normalize that wave function. So in this lecture, we're going to use the concept of normalization to find what the equation for A is. And that's exactly why another name for A is known as the normalization constant. So, let's begin with step one. So, recall that by definition, what it means for a wave function to be normalized is it has to satisfy this equation. So, this, the integral from negative to positive infinity of the square of the absolute value of the wave function with respect to dx is equal to 1. So, for our wave function to be normalized, this has to be true. The left side has to equal to 1. Now, let's actually take the right side of this equation and replace psi with the right side. So, we get this, which is equal to, so our a is a constant, we can bring that outside of our integral and we get a squared of the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of sine of npx divided by l squared of dx and this is equal to 1 by our process of normalization. Now, notice we can replace the negative infinity with 0 and the positive infinity with L. And that's because if we have a rigid box with a width of 0 to L, if the width is given by L, then the particle will only be found within this region. It will not go above L and it will not go below 0. So, we can replace our negative infinity with 0 and we can replace our positive infinity with simply L. And this is still equal to 1 by the process of normalization. So, to actually solve this integral, we basically have to replace our x with the angle theta. So, let's set our angle theta, which is the inside of this quantity, equal to n pi divided by L multiplied by x. So, this basically becomes theta. Now, what exactly is dx? So, let's take the derivative of these two sides. So, we take the left derivative with respect to theta and the right derivative with respect to x. So, we get d theta is equal to n pi divided by L multiplied by dx. So, we want to solve for this dx. So, we rearrange and solve for dx and dx is equal to L divided by n pi multiplied by d theta. So, dx is replaced by this as shown in the following step and the inside of the sine squared is replaced with simply theta. Now notice the lower bound stays at zero and the upper bound is now n multiplied by pi. Now n multiplied by pi comes from the fact that the sine of n multiplied by pi where n is a positive integer is always equal to 1. That basically means our particle cannot go above L and cannot go below zero. Now, 
let's actually bring the constants that appear on this side of the integral outside the integral. So, we have a squared multiplied by L divided by N multiplied by pi, and we multiply that by the integral from 0 to N pi of sine 2 theta d theta, and this is once again equal to 1. Now, once again, A is our constant that we're looking for, known as the normalization constant. L is the width of our rigid box. It's a fixed value. N is also a fixed value. It's the quantum number. And pi is simply our constant. Now, to actually solve this, we're going to apply a trig function. So recall that sine theta squared is equal to 1 half of 1 minus cosine 2 theta. So we basically take this sine 2 theta and replace it with this quantity as shown in the following step. So next, we actually integrate and we see that a squared L divided by 2 and pi, where this 2 comes from this value, is equal to theta minus sine of 2 theta divided by 2 because the integral of cosine is simply sine. So, we evaluate the integral from 0 to pi n, and we set that equal to 0. So if we evaluate this integral, this inside simply becomes n multiplied by pi. So a squared multiplied by l divided by 2 n pi multiplied by n pi is equal to 0. Now these two quantities will cancel, and if we solve for a, we see that the amplitude of the wave also known as the normalization constant, is equal to the square root of 2 divided by L, which is exactly this equation that we mentioned previously. So, once again, this A represents the amplitude of our wave function, of the wave produced by the particle inside our infinite potential well, also known as the rigid box. And because we use normalization to find what the equation for A is, this A is also known as the normalization constant of the particle inside our rigid box.